This video is brought to you by Nebula. Today, Ron DeSantis drops out of the US presidential race, Narendra Modi opens a new controversial temple, and Japan struggles to save a lunar mission. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Monday the 22nd of January 2024. With only two days before the New Hampshire primary, Ron DeSantis has dropped out of the 2024 presidential race and endorsed Donald Trump. The Florida governor, once considered a strong contender for the party's nomination, has dropped out, saying he does not have a clear path to victory, with Trump being the clear frontrunner after winning the first contest in Iowa with 51% of the vote. Last week, DeSantis narrowly finished ahead of Haley in the Iowa caucuses, with 21% of the vote compared to her 19%, and both remain well behind Trump. DeSantis said it had become clear that Republican voters want to give Trump another chance, and his departure from the race has saved DeSantis from a public embarrassment in potentially finishing third in tomorrow's primary behind Haley, who's focused her resources far more in the state of New Hampshire. DeSantis and Trump's personal relationship has deteriorated over the years. DeSantis acknowledged past disagreements and addressed an audience at a rally that Trump is a really terrific person, adding that he ran a great campaign and was superior to US President Joe Biden. There were actually very few significant differences between Trump and DeSantis when it came to their stances on different policies. The difference between the two was really rooted in competence and execution. What we mean by this is that DeSantis presented himself as a Republican candidate who could deliver Trump's populist agenda without the drama, baggage or controversies. In this sense, the whole competition between the two was essentially who could win the trust of the Republican base. Whilst Trump supporters generally liked DeSantis, some thought his campaign was much weaker than Trump's. Evidently, Trump is still seen by many of his loyal supporters as the only candidate who can deliver. Even if it's not a surprise that DeSantis has dropped in behind Trump, his endorsement is nonetheless a blow to Nikki Haley. DeSantis also managed to take a swipe at Haley during his speech, calling her the old Republican guard of yesteryear, a repackaged form of warmed-over corporatism. But Haley has maintained that she's the only one able to beat Biden and will go head-to-head -head with Trump tomorrow in New Hampshire for the Republican nominee. Nonetheless, despite the fiery rhetoric, it now looks overwhelmingly likely that Trump will be the Republican nominee in 2024, setting the stage for a Trump-Biden rematch that few Americans are enthusiastic about. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Moving to India now, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi has inaugurated the controversial Ram Temple, completing one of his long-standing promises to voters. The new temple sits on an almost three-acre plot of land on which the Babri Mosque sat from the 16th century until 1992, when a Hindu nationalist group tore it down. Since then, in 2019, the Indian Supreme Court called the destruction of the temple an egregious violation of the law, but gave the plot of land to Hindus, while giving Muslims a separate plot of land. For Hindus, the site is important, as it's believed that the Babri Mosque was built in the 16th century in the same position as the old Ram Temple. The new Ram Temple was opened today in a large invite-only celebration. The nearby state of Uttar Pradesh has been decorated in saffron flags and cutouts of Lord Ram. People watched the consecration ceremony on large screens across the country, and the event was even covered on a sponsored screen in New York's Times Square. Speaking about the inauguration, Rishabh Kushal, who was there to watch the ceremony in person, said that this is like a different world. The 500-year gap has been completed. Moving to the moon now, where a stranded Japanese moon lander could be about to be saved. The spacecraft known as the Smart Lander for Investigating Moon, or the SLIM, was turned off about three hours after it landed on the moon on Saturday in order to save power. The craft had only 12% power remaining when it was switched off. The issue came when the craft landed and engineers realised that its solar cells were pointing west, away from the sun, and could not generate electricity. The team behind the landing, though, now believe that the situation could be improving, as light conditions are getting better. If the solar cells are able to charge, then the mission can continue. 
It's worth noting that moon missions remain incredibly tricky, with only about half of all attempts being successful. This mission in particular makes Japan only the fifth nation in history to successfully land on the moon, and as such, they'll be keen to see the mission to its conclusion. Japan's space agency JAXA has promised updates on the lander through the week. In Germany, mass protests against the far right have continued. Over the weekend, hundreds of thousands of people across the country demonstrated against the Alternative for Deutschland party. Demonstrations were organised in about 100 locations, including in the major cities Cologne, Munich, Frankfurt and Berlin, where around 100,000 people gathered on Sunday outside the Bundestag. In Hamburg and Munich, protests had to be shut down early due to the turnout being far higher than expected. This wave of anti-AFD protests follows the publication of an investigative report on January the 10th, which revealed that party members had met with far-right extremists in the city of Potsdam, just south of Berlin, in November, to discuss a deportation plan targeting those with immigrant backgrounds, including German citizens. Centre-left Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who has welcomed the demonstrations and even joined one himself, said that any plan to expel immigrants was an attack against our democracy, and the thought of it sends shivers down one's spine. Currently, the AFD are polling at 23%, putting them in second place after the centre-right CDU. Scholz's centrist coalition has been troubled by infighting and disagreements over the last few months, causing his popularity to plummet. Our uplifting story for today is that Chile has become the first country to ratify the High Seas Treaty, officially known as the Biodiversity Beyond National Jurisdiction Treaty, or BBNJ. The treaty lays out a procedure to establish large-scale marine protected areas in the high seas, which cover nearly two-thirds of the world's oceans, and aims to conserve 30% of land and sea by 2030. It was formally adopted by governments in June and signed by 84 countries in September. While Chile has played a key role in negotiating the treaty, for the treaty to enter into force, 59 other countries are needed to ratify it by 2025. You've no doubt been following along with the news from Israel and Gaza, but if you want a better understanding to dive deeper into the history of the region, then you should check out Real Life Law's hour-long documentary about the tensions and fighting between Israel and Gaza going back decades. That video, by the way, is part of Real Life Law's Modern Conflict series, where they regularly run through major ongoing conflicts from Lebanon's civil war to everything going on in Myanmar and the Turkish-Kurdish conflict. It's an incredible series, and it's exclusively available on our streaming service, Nebula. As you likely know, Nebula is the service we built with a bunch of our creator friends, and is the home to tons of smart educational content from all your favourite creators. The best part is that by signing up, you not only get access to exclusive series like Modern Conflicts, China Actually from Polymatter, or The Logistics of X from Wendover Productions, it also directly supports TLDR. That's because when you sign up, you contribute to the budgets of these big budget documentaries, and it helps us grow and expand our ambitions. So if you sign up using the link below, you can support us directly and get 40% off Nebula's annual plan. That's less than £2 a month, which is an incredibly good price for an independent streaming service which not only supports creators but also provides you with tons of ad-free and exclusive content. Thank you for your support and for backing Nebula.